arithmetic. Matilda longed for her parents to be good and loving and understanding and honourable and intelligent. The fact that they were none of these things was something she had to put up with. It wasn't easy to do so. But the new game she had invented of punishing one or both of them each time they were beastly to her made her life more or less bearable. Being very small and very young, the only power Matilda had over anyone in her family was brain power. For sheer cleverness, she could run rings around them all. But the fact remained that any five-year-old girl in any family was always obliged to do as she was told, however asinine the orders might be. Thus she was always forced to eat her evening meals out of TV dinner trays in front of the dreaded box. She always had to stay alone on weekday afternoons, and whenever she was told to shut up, she had to shut up. Her safety valve, the thing that prevented her from going round the bend, was the fun of devising and dishing out these splendid punishments, and the lovely thing was that they seemed to work, at any rate, for short periods. The father in particular became less cocky and unbearable for several days after receiving a dose of Matilda's magic medicine. The parrot in the chimney affair quite definitely cooled both parents down a lot, and for over a week they were comparatively civil to their small daughter. But alas, this couldn't last. The next flare-up came one evening in the sitting-room. Mr Wormwood had just returned from work. Matilda and her brother were sitting quietly on the sofa, waiting for their mother to bring in the TV dinners on a tray. The television had not yet been switched on. In came Mr Wormwood in a loud check suit and a yellow tie. The appalling broad orange and green check of the jacket and trousers almost blinded the onlooker. He looked like a low-grade bookmaker, dressed up for his daughter's wedding, and he was clearly very pleased with himself this evening. He sat down in an armchair and rubbed his hands together and addressed his son in a loud voice. "'Well, my boy,' he said, "'your father's had a most successful day. "'He is a lot richer tonight than he was this morning.' He has sold no less than five cars, each one at a tidy profit. Sawdust in the gearboxes, the electric drill on the speedometer cables, a splash of paint here and there, and a few other clever little tricks, and the idiots were all falling over themselves to buy. He fished a bit of paper from his pocket and studied it. Listen, boy he said, addressing the son and ignoring Matilda. Seeing as you'll be going into this business with me one day, you've got to know how to add up the profits you make at the end of each day. Go and get yourself a pad and a pencil, and let's see how clever you are.'